Hello and welcome to another Inside Story in Sea of Thieves here at Rare and today I'm joined by senior designer Shelley Preston and senior software engineer Chris Marlowe and today we're talking about The Devil's Roar. So why did we decide to do The Devil's Roar to start with? So when we looked at Sea of Thieves after launch, one of the first things we wanted to do was expand the world, give players more islands to discover, a new area to sail into. But what we wanted to do was make it a part of the gameplay experience. So it wasn't just a new area that just looked different. It had to have an impact on gameplay. And Volcanoes is something that's been around for quite a while as an idea, right? Yeah, we're, when we had the concept art done right at the start of the game, one of my favourite images, we had these two images that were one of uh, pirates running onto an island and then mm. a volcano erupting in the background and them all running back off again, which is just brilliant to have them both on like on my two monitors, one and, and then the other. So the volcano has always been there as a very strong idea. It's yeah. one of the first things when we said we're going to expand the world, it was like the very first thing we went, volcanoes. It's yeah. going to be the volcanoes ones because it's so cool. And so like it's not just volcanoes on these islands, right? It's broken down into different kinds of natural disasters, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we obviously we do have the volcano which erupts and it rains down super hot rocks that will damage your ship, they'll damage players, and you get all this kind of like fire and ash coming down as well, don't you? Um, in front of the screen. It's a really, very visually yeah, impressive it's a, it's a moment. Stunning stunning experience. But then you also like preceding the volcano you have earthquakes and tremors. So these are kind of your first early warning that something might happen. So you'll feel the shake, you'll be kind of thrown off course, thrown off balance a little bit, and you'll be looking up at the volcano and seeing whether you can see the black smoke, which is the first sign of that erupting. And then we have the geysers as well, which is like big springs of hot water that just burst up through the earth around you, and they'll throw you up into the air and obviously you'll take damage if you land. Yeah, those are on the background all the time as, yeah. as part of a background threat, which just occasionally uh, burst up. But during a, a big earthquake or the volcano, suddenly everything amps up and yeah. they're, they're just firing off all around and that's when you. Kind of everything Happening. Everything's happening. And then you get to the water to try and get back to your ship and the water's super heated as well. Yeah, so the act of the volcano coming on has heated up the water around it. Suddenly this bubbling, seething mass of water has, has surrounded the island and you're trapped on it because if you just came in by yourself, you're now trapped on this island with all the rocks going down and you can't get back to your ship because it's super heated the water and you take damage going back in. Yeah. So we had to also add a mechanic that would help overcome this, <laughs> this thing we've added to the game. Yeah, so the rowboat is another idea that's been around for a really long time, but just felt perfect for this. Like, as soon as we thought about doing superheated water, it's like we just had visions of rowing over it and like overcoming the threat that way. That's really cool. And so do you ever start in the, the Devil's Roar or is this something you opt in to go into? You would never start in the Devil's Roar. It's actually another idea that we've kind of had for a long time is this idea of opt-in <laughs> difficulty voyages. So we wanted, when we created the Devil's Roar and we knew that it was going to be volcanoes, it was going to be this peril, this danger. So there's greater risk, but there's greater rewards. This kind of felt perfect as well to bring in this idea of this opt-in difficult voyage. So if you sail into the Devil's Roar and visit the outpost there, you can buy kind of like Devil's Roar version of the voyages and they'll take place in the Devil's Roar and they'll give you these special like Ashen rewards. So when we introduce a new area like this to the world, we also think about the lore behind it, right? And, and the Devil's Roar has quite a lot of lore behind it. It's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Like players will have first heard about the Devil's Roar in our trailer, where you saw Stitcher Jim rowing the rowboat. And Stitcher Jim is actually a character who's established in our expanded universe as well. He's a character from our lore outside of the game that we've shown in the game. And he was part of uh, the Forsaken Shores Alliance. And these were a, a group of pirates who discovered the lands beyond the Devil's Shroud, like what's out there. And they were the first ones to discover the Devil's Roar. And you can um, find out a bit of Stitcher Jim's side of the story, shall we say, but perhaps there's a bit more to it than that. And um, encountering um, the Devil's Roar yourself, you might uncover more to the story. And when we initially thought about the campaign and the way we laid out the campaign through the, um, the update, that changed during development, right? Yeah. Initially, we had three weeks of campaign where we were going to change it every week. So there would be certain content in the first week, certain content in the second week, certain content in the third week. But during development, we released Curse Sales and we had a lot of feedback from players that they just they wanted more time to be able to complete things. They 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 wanted to have you know if they perhaps couldn't play one week, they yeah. didn't like missing out. And like we thought that that's absolutely fair feedback. So we altered our campaign to make sure that for the duration of Forsaken Shores from the first day until the last day the campaign is the same to give people they've got f actually four weeks now to, to get all the same rewards enjoy. and everything you know yeah, if you're on holiday you don't get punished exactly. for being on holiday yeah. or... so what's the what have been some of the technical difficulties throughout this or technical challenges throughout well um, a lot of it has been making sure well obviously there's a lot more islands a lot more memory uh, and also these 
eruptions. Uh, there was a lot going on there. There's obviously a lot of effect work, um, yeah. lo lots of VFX, lots of SFX, and you can see these things from a long way away. And once we'd sort of sort that out, all the, all the draw distances and managed to get that under yeah. control, one of the coolest things we saw, and it was um, you can be in the main world and you look out and suddenly you see what, three or four volcanoes all going <laughs> off in the distance, all just through the mist, and it looks incredible. Yeah, it, it, really was, looks... it was a really important part of it for us, wasn't it, that you could see them from so far away, and we had yeah. to kind of read you how things worked yeah. and how we structured the world um, so that they kind of they weren't part of the island, but they were part of the world itself, so that you could see them from anywhere. But also there was there was uh, as part of the gameplay, we wanted to make sure the Devil's Roar was always a dangerous place to be. So we introduced sea volcanoes because we didn't just want volcanoes on the islands that are in there. Um, we, we needed the ability to be able to place the threat anywhere so that we could cover as much area of the sea as possible. So people should really get prepared if they want to go into the Devil's Roar, right? Because resources <laughs> are... A lot of the barrels are kind of burnt out and smashed, as you would imagine. I mean, there are resources to be found in Devil's Roar, but you do, you really want to prepare before you go. Well, thank you very much for your time today, folks. And Forsaken Shores is available to everyone now, so you should try and... Did you feel that? Oh, 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 oh. 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 That was my favourite video. Thanks very much for watching. If you'd like to stay up to date with everything Sea of Thieves, then please click the subscribe button and hit that little ship's bell for all those notifications. Cheers.